Hey guys, welcome to Long Beach, California. My name is Gilbert Hernandez. I'm a ProMar Pro Staffer, and today we're gonna to share with you the tips, tricks, and safety procedures to catch those bugs. But the first thing we have to remember before we step into any boat, any kayak, or even dive for a lobster, we need to know all the regulations for the California Department of Fish and Game. It's your responsibility, guys, to know the regulations. Whether you grab a handbook in a store, whether you visit the DFG website, or whether you talk to a game board on your own, it is your responsibility to know those regulations before you get those big bugs this season. All right guys, we're all ready to go lobster hooping. The most important thing before you step into any boat, any kayak, into any dive suit is your lobster card. And on your lobster card, it's a really long card. And the thing you wanna fill out here is the month, the day, the location code, and the gear code. And at the end of the night, you're gonna, you're gonna document how many lobsters you got for that night. Now, at the very bottom of your lobster card, you're gonna see the gear code. It's gonna ask you what kind of gear you're using. And at the bottom of that, you're gonna see location code. These are the things you're gonna put inside your lobster card. Without a lobster card, guys, you can't go lobster hooping. Hey guys, here at Promo, we have designed some awesome nets for you guys for this season. We have the 32 inch ambush, we have the 36 inch ambush, and we have the 36 XL ambush net that weighs 14 pounds. Let's start with the 32. The 32 is more for the kayakers or small boarders. I personally like a 32 when I'm on my kayak. And then we like to go to the 36. Some kayakers, if you're in like a Hobie Pro Angler or something of that sort, like a 36 inch, just a little bit bigger. And then we have the big dog. We have the ambush 36 XL, 14 pounds. And we recommend this with a puller. A puller is very important to pull this net. If not, you're gonna be miserable. It can be done, but with the puller, it's very successful those guys hooping Catalina and some of that deeper water with that heavy current. Audio jungle. All right guys, let's talk about rigging, the bread and butter of lobster hooping. You know, I get a lot of questions on how to rig my net. You know, back in the days we'd use a lot of zip ties, a lot of rope, things to keep this rope contained. Um, this is what works for me, and I've talked about this on some of the videos. If you visit our Promar uh, site, you can see some of our resources there. Is I like to use a extension cord winder. Now you can get this at Home Depot for a few bucks. And right here, I just have 75 feet of our Promar rope, uh, uh, rope wrapped around this extension cord winder. Now the most important thing of this system here is the float, guys. The float is the address to your hoop net. It tells you who you are. It lets Fish and Game know who owns that hoop. Why? Because you have to have your Go ID on your hoop net. So right here I have my Go ID on it. And then this is where the inner kindergarten person comes out and you can actually design your own hoop. Now every hoop um, float should never be the same from your partner you're fishing with or your neighbor you're fishing with or, or fellow lobster fishermen. You want your hoop to be something personal and different from everybody else. For me, I like to paint mine orange. And here at Promar, we have reflective tape. So you can put reflective tape on it. And I like to number my buoys one through five if I'm on a kayak or one through 10 if I'm on a boat. Because remember, five hoop nets on a kayak if you're fishing by yourself and 10 on a boat if you have other people with you. No more than 10, guys. So remember, go ID, number your floats. And I even too like to put my phone number on the back with my name, just in case someone finds it, they can return it to you. All right, guys, when I'm designing my float, I always drill a hole at the top. And people always tell me in seminars, what is that hole for? Well, that hole is for a light stick. It goes right in the top here. Now here at Promar, we have two types of light sticks that we use. We have one that's a battery operated one, and this is my favorite light stick. And then we have a chemical light stick that's a breakable light stick that illuminates green and illuminate the whole night. Now my favorite light stick is this one here, the battery operated one. And let me tell you guys why it's my favorite light stick, because it has two different settings. It actually has three, because one of them glows in the dark. But let's talk about the first two settings. One is a solid. If you turn this on, you can't see because it's pretty light out here, but we have a flashing setting on the light stick, it flashes. And then another setting is we have a solid setting where it's just a solid light, almost like the chemical light stick, a solid light. Now, why is this so important, people ask me, is because if you have, say you have 10 hoop nets out, okay, and you're pulling hoop nets, well, what happens is a lot of times you lose track of what hoop nets you pulled. So for instance, my first pull, I'll flash them. 
every five or 10 hoop dents that I put out, it's flashing. Now when I make a round and I start to pick them up, my next set will be solid. So what happens is if I see a light stick or I see a hoop net out there that's not flashing, I know that I didn't pull that. It helps me to keep track of the hoop nets all day because as you're pulling hoop nets all day, you will get confused of which ones you pulled. And don't make the mistake I've made where I dropped the hoop net and three minutes later pulled up the same hoop net because I didn't have a flashing system. So get these light sticks, guys. Know them. You can pick them up at your local tackle store. All right, guys, now let's talk about bait cages and wire cages and net cages and all those things that put the bait inside the hoop net to actually get the bugs to crawl in. Now, just know right off the bat, if you go in, we actually have a bait sack in the cage. But we don't really prefer that because we have sea lions here in California that will attack that bait, that other fish will eat your bait. And we're trying to keep our bait safe so we're not rebaiting all night. Now, usually when you buy one of our packages, you'll get like a wire bait cage like this. But we like, we have Promar here, we like the, the seal bait proof cage here or the sea lion bait proof cage. Um, and what it does is it keeps your bait um, from the sea lions getting it. Not just sea lions, but any fish or anything like that that wants to pick at your bait. A lot of times with the wire bait cage, if you're in a heavy populated sea lion area, they'll actually take the bait and they'll suck it right out of there. And so we, we here at Promar, we have designed a seal proof uh, bait cage to actually keep those sea lions away and frustrate them. So um, we do have these two different types of bait cages. I prefer the seal bait cage, but do I do not hesitate to bring this bait cage with me. It actually holds a little bit more bait. It's more scent in the water, but you'll find when you're using this bait cage, you're gonna be changing bait more often. With the seal bait cage, your bait's gonna stay a little bit more safe. You're not gonna be changing as much, and you're gonna be keeping those critters and those sea lions away from your bait. All right, guys, we talked about one of the most important tools on your lobster trip is a pen, but actually number two is a lobster gauge. Now remember, it's very important. Anybody lobster hooping needs to have a lobster gauge. Department of Fish and Game regulations state that. Now for me, um, I like to carry multiple gauges on my boat just in case we lose one. Okay, now let's talk about losing the gauge. Well, let's even talk about if a game warden comes on your boat and they want to see your gauge. I always have a gauge around my neck, okay? And I always tell people in my seminars to do that. Because if you have one around your neck, you know you're going to have it on your person at all times. But always keep your lobster gauges. Always buy a few more. Keep them loose around the boat. So you need to, if you need to measure a bug or if you get bored, you can actually tell the game warden where your gauges are. Now remember, those lobster gauges need to be three and a quarter. Don't go out making your own. Don't go home in your garage and make one. Make sure you go to your local tackle shop and get a regulated gauge. We at Promar make these specifically for you guys for the hooping season. So grab your lobster gauge. Don't forget it. All right, guys, now that we're on the boat, now that we have our lobster cards filled out, now that we have an idea how to rig our floats, let's talk about the most important part of the night and it's not catching bugs but it's the safety of you and your loved ones on the boat or on a kayak remember pfds guys pft is super important and the lighting let's talk about lighting we're going to be hooping at night it's going to be pitch dark at times let's make sure we have our running lights working let's make sure we have our radios working let's make sure that we have a plan set in place where you're going tell your loved ones hey i'm going to be hooping the break wall hey i'm going to hooping catalina to light let people know where you're at Let's talk about personal safety as well. Flashlights, right? Like this little guy here, a little LED flashlight. And also headlamps. Headlamps are important. Remember when you're pulling up those hoop nets, you don't know what's inside those hoop nets. There could be a sculpin, there could be an eel, there could be something that can really harm you. So make sure you have the proper lighting before you put your hands in that hoop net. All right, guys, as far as safety is concerned, we went over personal safety, boat safety, but let's talk about organization of the boat. Very important, guys. Over the years, talking to game wardens, they want to see an organized boat. If they're going to board your boat, they want to make sure that you're organized. For me personally, talking to them, what do they want to see? What they want to see is they want to see stack nets, five or 10 stack nets. They want to see buoys in the corner with go IDs on them. They don't want to walk on a boat with trash and rods and blood and 
a, a net, net stacked up this high with rope coming out of them, they want to see organization. If they come on your boat with organization, they see lobster gauges around your neck and they see lobster hoops stacked up and everything properly laid out. They're not going to give you a hard time. Also, it's going to make better for you when you're walking around the boat and for the safety of yourself. So stack those nets, guys. Keep your boat organized. It'll make you very successful on the water. All right, guys, now it's time to rig your nets, the time that we've all been waiting for. This is our seal bait cage. We have a lot of questions on this seal bait cage. And people say, you know, sometimes seals get inside the cage and it doesn't work properly. It's not that it doesn't work properly, it's that it needs to be installed properly. So we're gonna teach you guys how to install this seal proof bait cage. Now, one thing you need to know about it is our bait cage spins on this cable, right? And it has this flexibility. So we need to be able to get that flexibility out. So let me show you how to do that okay what you guys want to do is you want to clip your seal bait cage of course you're gonna have bait in it what you're gonna do is you're gonna get the slack out of the cage you're gonna hoop this around the cage and then you're gonna clip the wire just like that okay now there's no slack for the seal to open either side of the compartment and it makes it hundred ten percent sea lion or seal proof all right, guys, let's talk about the rig here, the rig of our float and our line. Now, we talked earlier about this extension cord winder. Now, what I really love about this extension cord winder is it acts as a cleat as well. So all I do is unleash the cleat here, and I can actually unravel the line just like this, okay? Now, at any moment of time, if I want to latch it down, all I do is turn it around, put it back into the cleat, lock it in place, and it's not going anywhere. Back in the days, we'd use rope or zip ties, and it was this big spaghetti mess. With this extension cord winder, it eliminates all the mess. Now, what I like to do on this is I like to put a stainless steel carabiner or a cleat like this. Now, this cleat here, you get at Home Depot, it's stainless steel, it weighs about, it, it can hold about a thousand pounds. Easy access, guys. All I do is unscrew it just like this, put the hoop in on there like that. And attach it together. A lot of guys like to use like climbing carabiners or things of that nature. You have to make sure what the rating is for the carabiner. A lot of people go to like the fair to get giveaway uh, uh, carabiners and they're not rated for any weight. They throw their hoop net over, they pull their net and their net is gone. Make sure that if you get a rating for this cleat, it's rated over a thousand pounds or else you will lose your hoop net in a rock or something like that. All right, guys, we went over all the basics. We went over safety, went over rigging, went over lighting. But where do these lobsters live? How do we catch these lobsters? For you first time, you're thinking, where do I even go? The ocean is so big, where do I even start? Remember, lobsters are a lot like a calico bass. A calico bass needs food, structure, and current to survive. Lobsters need the same things. Remember, they're getting preyed on. They like to hide behind things. So where are those things? Where, are, where, where can we find those things? We find them on a fish finder. We find them on mapping systems. So now that you know where to find these lobsters, let's go and safely throw some hoop nets and show you guys how to do that. All right, guys, now that we're driving out the harbor, we just want to keep our eyes open for certain things. Behind me here, we have the jetty. Lobster love jetties. They love these rock structures. And even over here, we have these pier areas. They like these pier areas as well. Anything man-made like that, there's gonna be lobsters on them. All right, guys, we are on a cool lobster spot now. This is what you wanna see on your fish finder. See, we have a valley, and then we have a mountain right here. This is exactly what you wanna see and exactly what you're looking for on your fish finder. You see these mountains right here? You see these little crevices right here, right in the middle, where it kind of comes down? It's a, it's a peak and a peak and then a valley. If you can, by any means, you want to drop your hoop net right between that spot right there, and that's going to be a feeding frenzy for those lobsters. All right, guys, we're, we found a great spot on the fish finder. We're ready to deploy our nets into the water. Now, what kind of bait are we going to be using? Because as you saw, this is, this is just a demon 
demo demonstration for you guys. We're not gonna have any actual bait in the cages today, but we like to use mackerel, salmon heads, sardines, something of that nature, some greasy fish. I also am a big fan of the Bite On products. I like the Bite On products, whether you're using the cloth type or the sprays. If you're using the sprays, I like to soak them in a sponge, freeze them, put them in the bait cage. It, it just gives that extra little scent out in the water to get those bugs into the hoop net. So let's go ahead and deploy this and I'll show you how to do it safely and properly. Hey guys, we're ready to deploy our nets now. Something I love to do with my rigging is I like to put a zip tie every five feet of my rope. Now this is 75 feet of rope on this uh, extension cord winder. So, I'll, so typically I would look at my fish finder and I would say for this area here that we found, we're about 35 or 40 feet. Now what I can do now is instead of just guessing what 35 or 40 feet is, I can actually unwind 35 or 40 feet on the deck by just the zip ties that tell me because I mark these on land when I rig this at five feet increments. So let's go ahead and throw this net. We have our our, our light stick and we now have the flashy mode. I have my go ID. I have everything that we talked about. So how are we going to throw this net? Let me show you how to do it. Make sure when you unwind your rope that it's at the bottom of your feet, at the base of your feet. You don't want to get tangled, tangled up with the rope. You want to make sure the rope is not in your way so you get all hung up and get thrown overboard. You want to make sure you're safe when you throw it. So when we throw it, we want to make sure we throw it straight out, not sideways. So we're going to throw it just like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to follow it down. And all we're going to do is take our rope, put our light stick, and we're just going to throw it out. All right, guys, it's very important when you're throwing your float and your net out that you don't want to have too much slack in the line. Right behind us here is our float. We have our light stick flashing. This is kind of the ideal setup that you want. We don't want to have 20 or 30 feet of rope hanging out because what's going to happen is uh, boaters are going to be zipping down the harbor, um, whether it's even a kayaker and it gets stuck in people's props. I've had that happen way too many times it can cause boat damage, but most importantly, it could damage a person that can really hurt someone really bad. So make sure that when you do have your float out, that you have just enough rope out that's not gonna hurt anybody. Also, you wanna make sure you have just enough rope out too because with tide swings, the tide goes up and down all day long. Now, you have to remember, if it's an incoming tide, right? Say it's a five foot tide swing, the tide's gonna rise five feet. So make sure to add an extra five feet to your rope. If not, your rope's gonna be underwater. Your buoy's gonna be underwater when the tide comes in. So make sure to adjust your ropes to the tide. If not, you're gonna lose a net and you're gonna be very heartbroken about it. But this is the perfect setup right here is what a float should look like. All right guys, let's talk about putting multiple hoop nets out and how to do it safely. It's important to spread your hoop nets out so you can work the area properly. Let me give you an example. For instance, I throw a hoop net out and then I throw a second one out because I want to hoop the same area, maybe the same stone. But by the time I turn my boat around to pick up hoop number one, my prop is stuck in hoop number two because I didn't spread the hoop nets further apart. So make sure that when you are dropping your nets, you have a safe distance. Remember guys, the key word is safe distance to pick up those hoop nets. All right guys, let's talk about retrieving the hoop net. The favorite part of the night, picking up the hoop net, seeing what's in that cage. Typically what I like to do is I like to pull my net usually 25 to 30 minutes after the sun has set. For now, we're just doing a demonstration. We're trying to get as much light like to show you guys. But typically, I like to soak my nets for about 25 to 30 minutes, depending on the season. I'll start to go longer as the season gets, gets, gets longer into the season. But at the beginning of the season, about 20 to 25 minutes soaks. And as we talked about before in the beginning of this segment, I label my buoys one through 10. So right now I have number one buoy soaking out on a flash setting. So let's go pick that up. And how we're gonna do that is with a boat hook. I have a boat hook right here. Um, ready to go and usually whoever's with me I'll let them know the boat hooks there I try to stay away from gaffs um, things like that because gaffs can get dangerous you're poking around with the gaff gaffs are meant for you know grabbing fish not so much nets so I like to use a boat hook by any chance if you, if you guys can make sure your deck is clean 
Make sure there's nothing in the way of that's gonna trip you up. Remember, you're dealing with ropes here, you're dealing with nets, and you're dealing with water. And when you're dealing with water, the deck's gonna be slippery. People are gonna be slipping around, especially when you're dealing with bait that's real oily and since they're real oily, it might make your deck a little slippery. So make sure you're aware of surroundings and what's going on. But make sure you have a boat hook in hand and make sure you know exactly what hoop net you're looking for. We're gonna go for number one and we're gonna work our way all the way to number 10. Let's go get number one. All right, guys, we're, we're about to grab our hoop number, our number one buoy here. Um, I'm aware of my surroundings right now. So when I'm driving, I'm always looking around, make sure I don't see any kayakers. Usually the closer we get to the jetty wall, you'll find kayakers out there, uh, maybe some small uh, skiffs out there. But what I'm looking for is what side of the hoop net I'm gonna pick the, the buoy up on. Now, usually if it's an incoming tide, the, the float's gonna be going towards land. If it's an outgoing tide, the float's gonna be going towards the jetty. So right now it's gonna be coming in. So I'm gonna be getting um, this hoop net on my left side. If I got on my right side, I, the rope would be under the boat. So what I wanna do is I wanna just steadily creep up to the buoy there. I don't wanna, I wanna keep the boat in neutral and I wanna kinda of play with the neutral and reverse as I get up to it. Forward, reverse, forward, reverse. I wanna just creep on that buoy. I don't wanna do any quick lunges. I don't wanna throw anybody over because when you, when you get up to that buoy, everybody, the expectation of pulling up that buoy, everybody's all around it. So you don't wanna do any quick jerk motions. So I'm gonna pull right up to that hoop net. I'm gonna put the boat in neutral. Now I'm gonna put my gloves on. Gloves are important, guys. I'm gonna grab the hoop net with my puller safely put the puller in the rod holder now this is the great thing about this guys i can actually drop this on the deck okay there's nothing attached to it i'm going to grab the rope i can feel the rope i'm going to give it a quick tug just in case there's some bugs on it maybe they're trying to get the snack that haven't quite fallen in i'm going to a quick jerk and i'm going to steady wind it up real steady guys keep your momentum on your pool the whole time okay Now what I like to do as I get the hoop net up is I like to keep the hoop net right here, okay? Shine a light in the basket and see what's inside the basket. And as you can see right here, we have, we have a, a shell of some sort, a crab or some sort. But um, we wanna make sure that we don't have any eels or sculpin or anything in there. Once we know that the, the basket is safe, the hoop net is safe to put on board, we're gonna put it on board and measure our lobster. All right, guys, now that we got number one buoy out, we're gonna repeat that for the next five or 10. Remember, if you're on a kayak, five nets. If you're by yourself, if you're by yourself on a boat, five nets. If you're with a family of 10 or 15 or six or three, 10 nets, no more than 10 nets for a boat. Remember that. Everybody needs a lobster gauge. At the end of the night, when we're all done, like we're done, we're done now, we're wrapping up our night. Remember, it's very important that you measure all your lobster. We cannot have a short lobster to boat. Lobster gauge is around your neck. Remember to measure each lobster. And each lobster that's short, throw overboard as quick as you can. The lobsters that you're gonna retain, put them in your bait tank, put them in somewhere where they're accessible for the fishing game warden to see. Now remember, before you're wrapping up your night, as you wrap everything up, we're gonna mark on our lobster cards how many lobsters we detained for that night. Whether it's one, two, three, remember you're allowed up seven lobster per person per night, okay? No more than seven. You have to mark that lobster on your car before you even put your boat in the gear. The minute you put your, your put, you put your boat in the gear and you don't document your lobster, you're in violation. You can get a ticket. So let's talk about cleaning up the boat. So now we're gonna put everything away, guys, to have a safe trip back in the harbor. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our lights. Remember, 10 lights, we're gonna put them Turn them off. Remember, these lights have three different settings. We have a flash setting, a solid setting, and if we were to put this in the dark, it's just glow in the dark. Put these away. Make sure if you use 10, you have 10 light sticks. Make sure if you have five, you have five lip light sticks. Make sure you keep track of everything that you have. Now let's talk about putting away the buoy and putting away this rope system. Before I told you guys that I like to use a carabine system. So this is how easy it is. All I do is I'm just gonna detach it here from the hoop net. Okay, very simple, just like that. Put it back, 
I'm gonna get my extension cord winder here. I'm just gonna wind the rope all the way up, all the rope I use, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set it aside. Now, this is the beauty thing about using the extension cord winder, as I showed you guys before, is it acts as a cleat. So I don't have any loose ropes. What I can do is I can go right through the handle here, right through the handle, right over the top, lock it in. It's ready to go. So now I do that, put that aside with my number three buoy right there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my bait cage. I'm gonna take my bait cage off. Remember this one we made seal, seal proof. There you go. Put it aside and I'm gonna stack my nets just like that. I personally like to keep all my nets separate from my buoys. The reason why is because it shows organization. I also like to, what I like to do, especially on an opening night, is I like to put all my lobster in one net at the bow of the boat. The reason why I like to do that is because when the game warden comes down, what he's gonna do is he's gonna see an organized boat. He's gonna say buoys, he's gonna see nets, he's gonna take a seat right here, and he's gonna go in your lobster, all the lobster are gonna be in here, and he's gonna start measuring. It makes his job a lot easier, and it makes him get off your boat a little bit quicker. So make sure at the end of the night, guys, you have your lobster cards filled out. Don't even put your boat into gear without filling out your lobster card. Make sure you have your net stacked, your buoys here, your bait thrown out, the boat clean, your life jackets on, and head back to the harbor. Hey guys, thanks for watching. We at Promer here want to wish you guys a very successful and safe hooping season. Visit our resource at promarahi.com. There we have a library full of resources and tools and literatures that you can find to help you be more successful in the water. But until then guys, I'm Gilbert Hernandez. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the water.